The truth about COVID vaccines. Will they be approved? Will they be mandatory? Will they end this crisis or will they create a new crisis? By the way, I know some of you are like, just give me the vaccine so that we can end this crisis. And others are like, I will not have a vaccine over my dead body. And if you want to have proof of that, just have a look at the comments below this video. And while we will cover the vax anti-vax debate later in this video, we're going to start with the facts. So number one, will they be approved? And the answer is in some countries, they already have. Here's an article from today. Almost a million people have been given an experimental Chinese coronavirus vaccine. This one's called Sinopharm. Vaccine has been given to Chinese construction workers, diplomats and students who have gone to more than 150 countries around the world during the pandemic, and none of them have reported an infection. Countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, the UAE are already using this vaccine. And Russia also has approved a vaccine called Sputnik, which is being used throughout Russia right now. And whether you believe in their data or think that they're safe or not, the fact is they're actually approved for use today. And I'm sure you've already heard about the Oxford vaccine in the UK or the Moderna and the Pfizer ones in the US, all of which have shown at this point over 90% efficacy and have already at stage three trials. But what does it actually mean? And what does it mean in terms of when they're gonna be approved for general use? Here's the current coronavirus vaccine tracker, which shows a total of 55 different vaccines at all different phases right now. As of now, there's 38 which are at phase one, which basically means it's just a small trial with a small number of people. 17 are at phase two, which means it's now being tested on hundreds of people. 13 are at phase three, which means we're now testing thousands of people. And the six at limited approval are the ones currently being used in places like China and Russia. The FDA is likely to get to emergency approval for the likes of Moderna and Pfizer within the next couple of weeks, which is the beginning of December. And then it's going to be rolled out over the next three to six months. So the next question, will this end this crisis? The answer is actually, yes, it will. Or at least the lockdowns, shutdowns and travel restrictions that we're having today. And this is likely to happen in varying degrees from March to July in 2021. As you can see from this tracker, countries have already bought 6.8 billion vaccine doses with another 2.8 billion about to be put on order. And if you're asking who's coordinating all of this, it's this organization called Gabi, which is a partnership between the World Health Organization, UNICEF, the World Bank, and yes, Bill Gates and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They're coordinating this project called COVAX, which is getting out these vaccines to the countries that are part of this, which frankly at this point is most of the countries in the world. So whether you agree with vaccines or totally disagree with vaccines, we for sure are gonna see enough countries adopting it and citizens taking it that this will end the crisis that we have today. And it will end within six months. But will it start a new crisis? Absolutely. In fact, it's gonna start three. The first is that the vax, anti-vax divide is gonna get even bigger. Recently, the University of Miami ran a poll where they asked how many people agreed with this statement. The coronavirus is being used to force a dangerous and unnecessary vaccine on Americans. 22% of whites and Latinos said, yes, I agree. And 42% of blacks agree. That's a pretty huge mistrust on both vaccines and also on the government. And here's the result of another poll from the Associated Press where only 49% of adults would actually take a vaccine and just 40% of those who are under 59 years old. Now, as the saying goes, one man's medicine is another man's poison. So this wouldn't be an issue, right? If it was all totally optional. But most people don't realize that over half of the world's countries already have mandatory vaccination of one sort or another. And while it's unlikely and probably impossible for a country to force you to have a vaccination, it is very likely that your choice will determine what kind of life you live over the next 12 months. So for example, here is an article on Australia's Qantas Airlines, which is the first to already say that they are going to put mandatory vaccination in place for anyone who wants to fly on their airline. And IATA, which is the organization that manages 297 other airlines, is recommending the same for all of those airlines. Countries like the UK are already trialing digital health passports. And while this does mean there will be flights starting up again in the next six months, if you're not going to get vaccinated, there's a very good chance you're not going to be able to travel. Companies by law in many countries can determine whether or not they want you to take a vaccination either as staff or even as customers. And so one way or another, your choice will determine what you can and can't do over the coming year. There's a second crisis this is already kicking off, which is the geopolitical crisis. In this Nikkei Asia article, red pill behind China's COVID-19 vaccine diplomacy. Southeast Asia bargains with Beijing for life-saving drugs. You know, in those spy movies where one side realizes they've just taken a poison and the other side is holding on to the antidote. This is what's going on in the world right now at a global level. It's giving diplomatic immunity a totally 
new meaning. China and Russia are using coronavirus vaccines to expand their influence. The US is on the sidelines. So the way these vaccines are going to get rolled out is going to lead to a total shift in power in the world we're going to see in the next couple of years. And that leads to a third crisis, which is the economic crisis. Governments and central banks have now pumped $19.5 trillion into our global economy. As the vaccines make it look like things are getting back to normal, governments, of course, are not going to put the same amount of aid towards their economies as they have been doing. And that's when we're going to see the massive wave of bankruptcies, unemployment rise again, and debt bubbles bursting. That's the reality of where we are today. These vaccines are a double-edged sword, where on the one hand, at least we're going to see some things get back to normal, but on the other, we're going to be moving into a world which is very different from the one that we're in today. What can you do about it? Well, make sure, first of all, that you're clear on your choices and then decide on what your plan is to be prepared for the future that is coming. Don't expect the government to be the one that's either number one, going to be telling you what to do, or number two, going to be giving you any handouts. We have bigger choices to make today than ever, and these choices often literally are life or death decisions. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please give it a like and do leave a comment down below on how you feel about all of this and make sure you subscribe so that we can keep up to date with where we're heading in what is a truly uncertain future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you again next week.